Welcome to Startup Health TV, I'm Logan Plaster. You may have been told as a kid that if you watch too much television, it'll rot your brain. Well, my guest in today's episode, Brian McCourt, says, not so fast. He makes the case that the right kind of media consumption could actually be just what the doctor ordered. With his startup called the Able Channel, which joined Startup Health in 2020, uh, Brian and his team are building high quality content along with partners like the Cleveland Clinic. They're creating content that doctors can prescribe to patients to educate them on how to deal with specific illnesses and disease. In our interview, we'll talk about what they've built. Brian will give us a preview of what's streaming next on the ABLE channel, and we'll talk more broadly about the important role of storytelling in achieving health moonshots. Stick around. All right, Brian McCourt, CEO and founder at the Able Channel. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule today to uh, talk with me on Startup Health TV. Thank you, Logan. It's a real great pleasure to, to speak with you. So you've had an expansive career in media across advertising and television, I think even film and your work got you uh, an Emmy along the way. Uh, now you're working at the Able Channel, a startup that you that you put together with some collaborators and you're kind of flipping the script on, on content, you know, from entertainment to thinking about content as health, which is a really interesting way to think about uh, what you're building. I want to get into the actual platform, but first, could you tell me if there was like a turning point for you when you really saw content and video uh, differently, when you really started thinking about it less as pure entertainment, as something that could really do good in the world? Sure. Well, I think... Um content obviously has the a lot of power right uh, whether it's propaganda or education um, for me specifically i can specifically point to one um, circumstance that kind of blew me away actually so um i had seen a program about signs and symptoms of a stroke um this was leading up, I was in the middle of a business at that particular point in time. And I was on a, the very next day, I was on a call with my partners. And one of my partners um, became unintelligible uh, in the middle of the meeting. It was a conference call. And something just heard in my head the previous day, I'd just seen the show about signs and symptoms of a stroke. Well, it, lo and behold, that's exactly what was happening. The mm -hmm. phone went dead. We called the police. They sent an ambulance and um, gave him the shot and saved his life. So 100% um, clear to me was the power of that programming that I had just watched the previous day. Um, now, I don't think that, you know, I know that's an anomalous scenario, but it was an important scenario, right? We've essentially emigrated or uh, emerged from the cave, if you will, by telling stories. It's how we learn, um, you know, where to hunt, where to fish, et cetera. And today, in today's day and age, you know, video is so ubiquitous. If you don't get real information that's helpful, that's not, you know, fake in some way, it can actually improve, you know, outcomes in, in, the, in the world. And so that's what we did with ABLE. You know, with ABLE Channel, we were effectively looking at a way to uh, deliver real stories about real people going through health journeys. Um, and, um, you know, 150 million Americans, so literally half the population have a chronic health condition or a disability. So when you think about that size of a marketplace, and then you look at that juxtaposed to, um, you know, the fact that there is no clear health care channel in the marketplace, that to me represents a huge opportunity to build a business uh, that is significant. So Brian, tell me a little bit about the content that's on the, uh, the ABLE channel site. When you go to the website, it kind of feels like a typical streaming channel. Uh, tell me about the style that you're shooting and what kind of content you're covering. Sure, so um, the content that we're producing really centers around core 10 conditions. So there are, conditions in the healthcare space that are driven by service lines. So things like cardiac and oncology, uh, orthopedics, chronic disease, um, they're by nature, you know, obviously clinical conditions. 
Uh, but what we've learned, and you know, you can see this every day, is that if you're not packaging content appropriately today, especially medical content, people fail to engage. So what's important for us as a streaming service is to create compelling content, programs like Special Diets Kitchen, programs like Surviving Suicide, programs like So You Have, which literally create um, an engagement platform and also become part of the care path journey where a doctor can now not only um, you know, your path and your prescription for medicine or whatever the, whatever the next uh, step in your journey is. But what we're working toward is the prescription of content to make you better, um, you know, actually incorporate it. And we're working with our hospital providers now uh, to integrate it into the EHR system so that once you've got a diagnosis, let's say you meet with a doctor and you know, you've di been diagnosed with Parkinson's, it's, you know, what do you have? Who else has what you have? And then what are we going to do about it? You know, what's on the horizon? So now all of a sudden, the consumer who is in sort of a PTSD event when, the, when they're in the hospital, being diagnosed with cancer or whatever, whatever that condition is, they can actually watch content that kind of calms the situation, lets them know that there are others who have, you know, persevered. And then the last piece, of course, is all of the great things and work that's being done to mitigate their, their condition. When you talk about prescribing content, you're really talking about going a step beyond a sort of a feel good series that happens to have somebody with a certain condition in it. Um, what's the role of actual evidence of working with clinicians and providers and being sort of knit into the, the healthcare ecosystem, what role does that play in actually creating these shows? Sure, so uh, the, the content that we produce is kind of bifurcated, it's twofold. One is general consumer, so it's learning about you know, conditions like you know, mental health, for example. We have a series called Surviving Suicide that uh, we produced and won an award last year. It's literally about telling patient stories uh, who have effectively transcended the situation. So people who were not successful at committing suicide and changed their life outcome. This is really meant to serve a broad general population around a large existential issue like healthcare, uh, like suicide and specifically men, because suicide is now the leading cause of death amongst males under the age of 30. So large patient population. Uh, but we bring them into the content to effectively uh, share other people's stories. So that tends to be focused on the large macro, right, of the condition so that folks can learn about it and also identify signs, et cetera. Once you move into the clinical side of things on the, prescri on the prescription side, it's more about you know, telling people what they have and then sharing other people's stories so that you're starting to now have um, a better perspective on your condition or diagnosis. So that's another utility of the platform. It also can apply to risk mitigation or um, uh, condition med mitigation. So in other words, if you've been released from the hospital, let's say, and your uh, doctor prescribes that you watch wound care treatment, so you'd watch that piece of content or that series. We verify that you watched it and then they can track back longitudinally, you know, were you readmitted with a post-operative infection or not? Yeah. So to your point, that then really proves the efficacy of the content effect, you know, effectively uh, improving uh, the healthcare outcome or okay. in this case, mitigating the post-operative infection. Okay, so you're making this streaming service uh, for health that kind of takes you from sort of general knowledge for a consumer all the way to what could become evidence-based uh, care and, and tied to readmissions. You've made this uh, award-winning content about suicide uh, prevention last year, but as you know from your, your work, distribution is king. So talk to me about how you're getting this into people's hands, what the strategy is, whether it's through collaborations or through different channels and kind of where you're at in that process right now? Sure, so um, it's a great question. So I just wanna make sure I'm absolutely clear. 
Able Channel is a streaming service, a consumer streaming service that's 100% dedicated to healthcare. So large existential healthcare issues, we're creating series that address those. So it's things like diabetes, cancer, cardiac, et cetera, but wrapped in a brand, in a, in a multi-part, multi-episodic program that is addressing that particular patient population. So that's one part of the distribution. And our channel is actually live in preview. We just launched yesterday uh, another partnership with uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We just launched a, a bunch of their content on the channel. And their goal is to effect effectively cancel blood cancer. So um, that program is now up and running alongside of the, you know, the other programs that we've uh, started to release one after another. So that's distribution on our channel. Then we also have partnerships with um, healthcare providers. So I'll give you another example. Oshner uh, in Louisiana, largest health system in Louisiana is a partner of ours. We built what we call a walled garden of content. So you, you think about the channel itself, which is able channel healthcare content. We then can also have partnerships where uh, our provider partners can have a channel that's dedicated to their doctors, their um, patients, et cetera, where they can log in and utilize the platform, but they're seeing Oshner's doctors, okay? They're seeing Oshner patients. Um, and so that allows them the full suite of functionality uh, for the channel. And at the same time, they're you know, effectively utilizing it under their brand moniker. So that's another way in which we distribute content directly to patients. So it allows uh, hospital systems to come on and have a dedicated channel, a streaming channel, if you will, um, of their own, which is residing on the ABLES channel infrastructure. The other way in which we distribute content is um, we distribute content on programming like the show that we have coming out on NBC on October 30th, so that'll air nationally. It's a show on diversity, equity, inclusion for folks living with disabilities. Um, and that, that's the type of thing that we're able to do because of our media background. So distributing a program like that on NBC actually helps us to amplify the issue uh, of folks living with disabilities and their, their right to work. Uh, but we can similarly do the same thing, you know, things around vaccination or depression. We, we're not confined by the channel. We're able to distribute content off of the channel. S same thing with a series like um, Good Health Minutes, which we developed in concert with Cleveland Clinic. You know, that program can live on our channel, but it also can be distributed across other streamers or even other news services. So it's um it's a create once publish everywhere model got it um and it, that's you know that's a, the, the di distribution that you mentioned is is so critical yeah have people responded whether clinicians or patients have people responded the way you expected them to respond to this content um yeah and i i i can say you know because we're we're still in startup mode um for all intents and purposes you know, um, the pandemic shifted our focus from being a solely direct to consumer model to being in service to patient and doctor. Um, we're not doctors. Um, we have a great board, which is a mix of both media and medicine, you know, folks from senior positions in both the medical side of things as well as the media side. But the pandemic really shifted our attention away from direct to consumer and more in service to the patient doctor. Um, because they needed it more, you know, at, at that particular point in time. The second piece of that was, you know, you couldn't produce anything because everything was shut down, you know, for a period of time. So by focusing on uh, the clinician side and, you know, working with our partners, to your, to your point, um, we, we're, we've now started to see the effects and it's almost instantaneous. Like when we launched Surviving Suicide, um, there's nothing more powerful than like the story that I told you when you asked me, was there a moment? And I told you about my friend who, um, you know, had the stroke. Well, in the case of surviving suicide, it's a very um, you know, touchy subject for sure. But we were receiving, you know, social media posts from people who said, this is such an important series. 
it literally had me, you know, calling you know, the, the, the person commenting saying this had me calling out, reaching out and getting help. So that to me is the kind of satisfaction to me, the, the most uh, important endorsement. Uh, we had NAMI, I think, posted and tweeted out as well um, the, that they're, uh, you know, through their, they're essentially the ones that manage the, um, the 1-800 lifeline, um, you know, for folks who are contemplating suicide. They tweeted it out and, and we got tremendous feedback from them as well. So I can honestly tell you, you know, anecdotally, we've gotten, you know, from the patient population, a lot of um, positive feedback. And the other thing that's important, Logan, is that show, just like our other programs, all, everything we produce has a clinical underpinning to it. Sure. So that particular series features doctors from Cleveland Clinic's Behavioral Health Group. Uh, who were enormously helpful in 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 help, helping to make it happen? Yeah, I got to see one of those, uh, well, a few of those episodes, and I noticed that you wove in the clinician voice in a really unique way. So it wasn't just a a docu series; it had that physician angle, which I think is is unique and important. Uh, in the one minute we have left, um, who are you hoping to collaborate with right now? Uh, depending on who who happens to see this, who would you like to who would you like to partner with? Well, we're open to partnerships with really anybody along the healthcare continuum. It could be products, it could be, you know, new advances, it could be clinicians, it could be even on the insurance side of things. Um, there are a lot of applications for what we're doing. The whole idea is that we live in a, a time where, you know, digital engagement is paramount. Um, and we're seeing that more and more that the consumerization of healthcare is starting to, you know, flourish and the the distributed virtual side of healthcare is also completely taken off. Our goal is to have this repository of content available, but also have it be have utility in the marketplace. So on the partnership side of things, you know, we're open, as I said, from products to services. Um, you know, we can create content and we can distribute content and we can also measure the effectiveness of it. So our business is all about content channel and data. And so on the partnership side of things, we're looking for folks who, you know, want us to help uh, get the message out and to the broadest population, but also on vertical channels that will have the greatest impact. That makes sense, Brian. Well, I think it's a good note to end on. I appreciate what you're giving us the time today. And I really love how you are taking a new look at, at content, how it can be used to heal and not just to entertain um, I think it's an important shift that needs to, needs to happen now as we recognize that content is king, but we have to figure out the right ways to use it. So appreciate you doing this work. Yeah, absolutely. I'll leave it one thought, you know, as a kid, you you probably heard this from your mother, you know, don't, you don't want to watch too much television that will rot your brain. There was a lot of truth in that, but the converse is also true, right? If you're putting good stuff in your brain and you're, you know, you're watching content that is informative, instructive, it's authoritative, well curated, um, it can have a positive impact. I can speak for myself, it certainly helped multiple times in my life. And I know that we live in this world today where we're essentially, you know, video is king, content is king. What we're doing is giving voice to people who are not typically in the media space and providing a, a, a platform for them to amplify, uh, you know, their important messaging. So that's really what Love it's it. all about. Love it. Well, we'll be watching uh, what you do next. And uh, best of luck, Brian. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate it. All, all right. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye. I was in a dark hole and there was not one speck of light. I attempted suicide three times. I had attempted suicide twice. Seven times. I was a freshman in college when my brother, Ryan, took his own life. You just don't think anybody cares about you and nobody loves you or you're a burden to somebody? The stigma is what really keeps people from getting the help. I wasn't brave enough to pick up the phone and call somebody. A lot of mental health professionals didn't talk about their own experiences with it. I remember thinking, someday I will talk about this. After 9-11, I didn't understand what was going on with me. I didn't want to sleep at night because I didn't want to have those dreams. That really started my downward spiral. 
I was sexually abused and my sister was shot and killed by her husband. I didn't know what to do with all these emotions that I had on the inside. It's not just like a switch that you can change on and off. It's something that you have to learn to live with and that you have to develop your own healing and your own plan for. I was having the suicidal thoughts and it was even worse because I was like, I feel trapped in every possible way. He needed to know that having a mental health issue was not a life sentence. I couldn't understand why he would leave us. I miss him so much. It's okay to have a bad day. You might continue to have suicidal thoughts, but you can still get through it. To help other people, that's what fires me up every day. My mental illness is not my fault for having it. I love the fact that I can be that person that someone can come to without judgment, but with compassion. And it is the positive and hopeful stories that need to be out there that my brother Brian had needed to hear. It's okay to talk to someone, I promise. If you don't think you're important, you're important to somebody. And allow them that last chance to try to help you because they love you and they want you here tomorrow. Quick word about this show, in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.